today we're going to be looking at the Synology DX510 unit. Now this unit is an expansion unit for your already present Synology NAS. So this unit does not house the Disk Station Manager or any other software. It simply houses some extra hard drives for you to quickly expand your current volume or use for backup purposes. So uh, we'll discuss that further into this video. So I'm on the actual Synology website here. I just want to take a quick look at the supported models. So um, if we go to this page, we can see here that the 5110 um, has a range of supported models here. Now the model I am going to be using along with the DX510 is the DS1511+. Plus. I've already reviewed and taken a look at this uh, in some depth in some of my other videos, so feel free to take a look at them. But uh, let's get stuck into this DX510. As I said, we'll explain further on exactly what it does, how we set it up further into this video. So uh, without wasting any further time, let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we have the actual Synology unit itself, the DX510. It's not much to see on the box. Uh, it says at the bottom there for Windows and Mac, um, hard drives not included. And uh, the box itself is quite plain. There's not really too much on the box. So um, let's take a look and see what's inside. Okay, so we open the box with the flap at the front. And then we first have an accessories box here, which has your normal power cable, standard three pin uh, kettle lead that you receive with computers, two sets of screws, one set is for your 2.5 inch hard drives and one set is for 3.5 inch hard drives so you can use both drives in this actual expansion unit and finally we have a proprietary eSATA cable Now the eSATA cable is bigger than usual we'll discuss exactly why further on in this video when we uh, actually connect the unit up so it's nothing else in that box there and finally we have the actual NAS unit itself. The actual NAS unit itself, we can see the five drive bays at the front. We've got some status lights at the top here and the power button. We'll go into exactly what these status lights are for um, and what they indicate further on, further on in this video when uh, we set this unit up. But for now I just want to take you around the back. So around the back we have our power connector two large fans to exhaust the hot air from the hard drives out of the rear of the expansion unit and one single eSATA connector so you can't actually daisy chain this unit it's not supposed to be for daisy chaining it's simply one expansion unit for your Synology NAS um, and the, the DS1511 Plus NAS unit that I have already and I have reviewed uh, earlier on can actually have two of these expansion units attached to it. So there's a single eSATA connector which will connect to one of the eSATA ports on the back of your Synology NAS. So what we'll do now, we'll get this unit set up and we'll talk about the, uh, the status indicators across the front of the unit and uh, have a look at the setting up of the unit, creating volumes and so on. Okay, so here we have the Synology DS1511+. Plus. NAS. This is the actual NAS unit, so the NAS unit runs the actual disk station manager software and so on. This is the expansion drive, this doesn't run the disk station manager software, um, it's literally expansion only, adding hard drives only. Now ignore the router at the top, that's my Apple Extreme router, ignore that, it's nothing to do with this video whatsoever. So um, Synology NAS and here is the disk station we've just unboxed and put into location. Now we can use this in one of two ways. We can fill up the drive bays and use it as a backup to the original NAS. So everything that's stored on here, uh, we can schedule a backup so that everything is also put onto here. Now this is set up as RAID 5, so it has one disk redundancy. So I've got that, uh, that fault tolerance there anyway, but um, you can never have enough backup. So I can set this up so it backs up all the data from here onto here or we can extend the, this is all as one volume at the moment, so this is a RAID 5 single volume. We can set this up as an extension to this, so rather than having five drives, we can have ten. So it, it will all be one logical volume. Now, 
we'll have a look at these later on in the software side and how to set these up. The link between the two is very important, especially if you're going to be using this as one large volume. Now the eSATA cable that comes with these systems, as we saw earlier on, um, it's a proprietary eSATA connector. Um, we need to plug it into the rear of the Synology NAS and the rear of the disk station to actually marry them both together. Now the connector goes into the rear of both units and the thumb screws need to be tightened because let's assume that we have one volume across both systems. Um, if that cable comes loose, we will lose that volume. So we want, don't want that cable to come loose, we, do, we want it to stay tight and secure throughout, which is why you've got the thumb screws. So the thumb screws need to be tightened up, that creates a nice secure connection between the two. Now one thing to note is that although both of these have power buttons, um, you never really have to use the power button on the expansion unit. By switching the main Synology NAS unit on, it will automatically switch on your expansion unit, so it will all come on together. When you shut down your Synology NAS, it will automatically shut down the expansion unit. So again, it will all shut down together. So you can basically set this up and ignore it. When you power this on and off, this will automatically come on and off with the actual NAS itself. Okay, let's have a look at these indicator lights at the front. Uh, we said we'll come back to these earlier on in the video. You have your power light here. Now switch the unit on and off. As we said uh, earlier on, the actual main NAS unit you have this expansion unit connected to will uh, power this unit on and off also. So you don't really need to worry about this power button too much. A blue power button means the power is on um, and when it's off obviously you get no light there whatsoever. If you do need to manually switch this unit off, you keep the button pressed for 7 seconds and that will manually power down this uh, expansion unit. Now if we start from this end, we have an eSATA light here. Um, when that's solid green it shows that there's a connection between this and your NAS unit. When there's no light there it shows that there's no connection. We have a RAID indicator next. Now when it's solid green it shows that the volume is created. When it's flashing green it means the volume is degraded so there's a problem. Or when, there's, when it's completely off the volume is crashed or it's not created, so you've got no volume created on the drive. Next we've got the status light here. Um, it's solid green if all the system is functioning fine, off if there's a problem with the actual system. So that's all the status lights there for. The alert light, which is the next light here, is basically an indicator of the fan status. So if your fans are working okay, the, the light will be off and if your fans are not working you'll have a solid orange light. So really you're looking for solid lights here and this light to be off for everything to be functioning okay. Now you have got your hard drive indicators just like you have with your normal NAS. They are solid green uh, when the disk is ready and idle. They flicker when the disk is being read or written to, so when the disk is in use. Um, and a solid orange light shows that there are errors on that actual disk and obviously if there's no light there at all it's not it's either not detecting a disk in the drive um, meaning there's an error with the disk it's not powering up or so on or it's showing that there's no disk in that bay at all now the next step is to add hard drives into the DX510 so that we can begin to set the unit up either create a volume or use it as backup which we'll take a look at in uh, a while um, I'm only going to be adding one hard drive to this unit at the moment so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. To remove a bay, simply unlock by flicking the little notch up and release the bay by pressing in and then remove. You can use either 2.5 or 3.5 inch hard drives in the actual caddy. The 3.5 inch will obviously take up the entire space in the caddy. You get screws for both sizes so simply use the screws appropriate for the drive 2.5 inch drives will go at this corner here you can see the screw holes there so you put the, the 3 2.5 inch drive there with the SATA connectors at the top and uh, screw from the bottom on each of them using the appropriate screws now I've got a 3.5 inch drive that I'm going to be using so we simply drop that into the caddy and we're going to use the appropriate sized screws 
to screw each side of the drive securely in place. Inserting a hard drive is as simple as removing a bay. So we have our hard drive here. Simply insert into the empty slot, push in till it locks into place, and lock the unit into place by flicking the little notch down. Now I've just adjusted the camera angle so that we can see all of the lights when they all come on. So just to recap, we've got the actual NAS unit here, the DS1511 Plus, and the new DX510 here where we've just installed the single drive. Now I'm going to switch the main unit on and it should automat automatically switch on the DX510 here. So let's go switch that on. Straight away we can see the DX510 gets power and is switched on. I'm not expecting all, the, all those lights to light up because we haven't actually created the volume yet um, but we can see that the unit has switched on alongside the NAS perfectly fine. So we can see everything is powered up here. We've got my the actual NAS unit powered up with all five hard drives and all three lights at the top running perfectly fine and we've got the DX510 here. There's the, the light for the drive that we've installed. Um, we can see that the eSATA status is connected so there's the connection between the two and the actual status indicator light is on. Now there's nothing, no light on RAID because we've not actually created the volume. So let's now switch across to the computer and get this set up. Okay, so as we can see, I'm using a Mac. The process would be no different for Windows. Simply open Safari, Internet Explorer, or your web browser as uh, normal, and browse to your disk station. I'm then going to log into my disk station. To check that the DX510 has been successfully connected to the NAS, we simply go into Control Panel, click on External Devices, and we can see the expansion unit Synology DX510. So it's detected the unit and it's being de depicted here correctly. Okay, now that we are now logged in to the disk station, I'm going to go on Storage Manager here. So if I start Storage Manager, now, before we look into anything further, we'll just go into the H HDD management, so hard disk drive management, and we can see the DX510 here. So if I just increase the size of that, we can see the DX510 unit is here, and we've got one disk of uh, two terabyte, which is what I've just uh, inserted into the system. And we can click on that and get disk information and so on um, as and when you need to. Now, if we go back to volume, we've got two options here. We can now either create a brand new volume, so a separate volume to the volume I've already got created here. Um, by doing that, I can then use that as uh, some completely separate data storage or as a backup, which is what I actually plan to do. Or we can extend the current volume here and add the additional drive onto this current volume. So it all looks like one logical disk. To do that, um, we would select volume 1, click on manage, and then we can expand the volume by adding hard disks. We click next, we choose the disk we want to add, click next, and then we get this warning to say um, the volume will crash if we disconnect the expansion unit and so on. Just so a couple of warnings for the kind of information that I went over earlier on in regards to the importance of that eSATA cable between the two and to make sure it always stays securely in place. Now I don't want to continue with this because I want to create a brand new volume so I'm going to select no here and cancel and I'm going to create a volume so I'll go to create up the top here and I'm just going to quickly create an SHR volume, which is what I'm after. Um, fault tolerance will be obviously available later on as I add more drives. Um, so I'm going to click next here. I'm going to click disk one, which is already selected as the only disk that I've got spare. We'll click on next. And we'll get a warning to let us know all the data from the selected disk will be erased. I will sure want to continue. Select yes. Obviously, before you do any work like this, make sure you have a backup of all of your data on the NAS. I've already got a backup of my NAS um, on an external hard drive, but it's very important to have a backup just in case anything should go wrong. So I'm going to select yes to this. Bad selector will be already uh, automatically remapped if found. Performing disk checks takes longer, but errors are less likely to occur during the volume building process. So I'm going to select yes for that because I'm using a hard drive on which DSM was not installed before. So I'll select yes and click next. 
and we confirm our settings. So we, we, I've not got the data protection at the moment because I've only got one hard drive, so I'll need more than two hard drives, so three or more, to actually have the RAID 5 protection. And that will come as I expand uh, the unit and add more disks later. And we click Apply. So that will go off and do its thing, do its um, disk check and create the actual volume. Um, so we've got a new volume 2 where it says creating. If I go into it, we can say it's doing the disk check. It's only at 0.13% yet, so that's going to take a little while. Um, and we've got the one disk here. So uh, we'll leave that running, and as soon as that's complete, we'll continue. Okay, so it's taken around three hours to uh, check the entire drive for errors and create the actual volume. Bear in mind that was a single two terabyte drive, so the bigger you, the drive, the more uh, time obviously it will take. The actual lights on the drive, as we can see here, are all current. The RAID light is now on because a volume has been created. And we can see the volume here, so volume two. Uh, created with Synology Hybrid RAID without data protection because I've, I've only got the one drive in the actual unit. And we've got two terabytes there, 835 used on formatting and so on. So 1.8 terabyte available. So volume two has been created successfully. So if I go into the control panel here, we go into shared folder. You can see all of my shared folder folders. I need to create a new shared folder. I'm going to just give it the name backup and description NAS backup and we're going to create it on volume 2 so here we go and we click OK now that will create the shared folder I'm going to give admins read and write because I actually tend to log in as admin for backup purposes and so on so we can see here backup has been created on volume 2 and now if I quit this if I go back into finder and back into my disk station we can see that the backup share has now been created and that's actually created on the DX510 on volume 2 so if I now go back to my disk station and go into backup and restore I should be able to create a new backup it's going to be, we'll just keep the name as backup set one. It's going to be a local backup because it's backing up locally onto the DX510 connected via eSATA. Click on next. I want my destination to be backup, which is on volume two. Um, we can give it any directory. I'll just call it disk, disk station. Click next. And then you carry on as normal. So you select the items you want to backup and carry on as normal. Okay, so there we have it. That was the Synology DX510. Very simple to set up and use as we've seen throughout this video and it does exactly what uh, it says on the box as it were. Excellent bit of kit, another great result from Synology here. If you have any questions in regards to the unit, please feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message and uh, I'll do my best to respond to you. Click on the above for more Synology videos. If you are on a mobile device, you will find all of the above videos and more on my channel.